is a photograph I took the weekend when I was out on a walk. A lot of muddy, it's quite muddy, a little path going off into the distance, framed by trees either side, we a little fence down there. So, before I have a go at this one, I'll just have a quick look at the materials. They're all Cotman watercolour tubes, arranged on the palette we've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. Brush is the large Ron Ranson hake. Got me water jar there, the nice lip on it that I use to take the X off so it's water off. The rest of it, if needs be, I use a tea towel up there drying at the top. Using this Fabriano 15 by 11 um, cold pressed 130 pound watercolour paper. So I'm just going to start with the clear water. I'm not going to wet it too much because I normally do that for sky purposes, but there's not much sky in this scene. So all I want is just enough so that the paper's not going to crinkle. Just stretch evenly. I'm going to dip the tip in, bring the ears back together and uh, go into just a bit of raw sienna, it's just a nice background colour to save it being just plain white. And I'm just going to clean the brush, a bit of um, ultramarine, just brush some of that in. I didn't really need to clean the brush because of the distant land I'm going to always use the same sky colours. Um, now the paper's already wet so I'm going to take some of the brush, the water off the brush just to compensate for that. Go into those same two colours again, raw sienna, burnt umber, not burnt umber, ultramarine. Let's just pop in. There's just a little bit of distant lab in here. Just, just sort of lightly plant that in. And then just do the furthest trees. Furthest trees, something like that. Don't really see much on that side yet. So that's all I've got really in terms of distant land. So I'm going to give it a quick dry. I do. It doesn't have to be bone dry, just drier than it was. So that the next layer goes on a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger in tone. It looks as if it's coming towards us and it'll push that real even further back. So starting on the right hand side of further trees, so I'm going to use pretty much the same two colours, a bit stronger there. I'm going to add a little bit of lemon yellow as well. So we've got those three colours all going on the brush. Start down there and just flick it up. Something like that. So it's going to some burnt umber, some light red, just to change the uh, colour really. Then we'll just green this all the way. Right, it needs to be a bit stronger, just so it stands out against that. So on this side. Don't want to cover up where the path's going. Clean the brush now, I want it to go a bit green. The brush is going a bit muddy, so clean it. A bit of ultramarine blue and a bit of lemon yellow. Let's go back to sort of normal green colour. I'm just going to pop that just up there. A bit more sienna. A bit more green, a bit more ultramarine. Just trying to vary it as I'm coming down. Also, a bit on the other side, lemon yellow. Just 
bit of blue, just to vary the grey, makes it sort of deeper colour. Just dipping the tips in, just to dilute what's already on there. And then it's going to... Some of the trees are evergreen, some of the uh, all lost their leaves and they're just sort of brown twigs. So let's just go burnt umber, ultramarine, and it's going right up to the top. Just using the corner of the hike. So I'm bringing that down somewhere about there. I don't want much water on the brush, I want this nice and thick. Bringing that down to where that fence is going to start. And then because I've got it on thick, I might just scrape it out with a, with a card rather than brush it. I'll see what it looks like anyway. So it's some, it starts about there, so let's just pull it out, make it like a fence shape. There's another one down there. Yeah, gonna... You see, it's a little fence. Something like that. I'll, 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 I'll just see what happens when it comes to that bit. Straight by here. So we want something on the other side as well. Now it's dried a little bit. So this, will, this should go on really strong now. There's not too much water. There's hardly any water on the palette, you can see. Nice thick paint. So that we're not going to like that. See how it comes off. See how strong it looks now against the other. The light below before it. Nice and strong. Remember, not forgetting. You can use a rigger brush for this, or you just scrape me with your fingers. Same with this. In fact, let's use the rigger now. Take the number three rigger. Same two colours, burnt umber, ultramarine, a bit more water. Always looks best where the uh, see the gaps, see the gaps in between where you've done the brush strokes, just fill them in with twigs and branches and stuff. And a few sticking out. More on this side. Don't hold it like a pen, hold it quite far up the, uh, up the handle and then just sort of flick them all over the place. You need a bit of water because it's, it's a complete opposite to the hike. It doesn't hold much water this push and it will run out pretty quick. Continue my little fence there. Just give it up like that. Also got a bit of telegraph probably up there. Go a bit straighter. But this isn't really. That'll 
Here's that set of ground column. Dark down there, the little grasses. Let's switch back to the green. That's enough dark tones from there. Back to the green, let's just go lemon yellow, just straight lemon yellow, I am not going to use another colour. Maybe pushing some. Bit of grass along there, so let's just push that in. Some there between the fences as well. And then there's some on the side, bring that down. Green, just to change it a little bit, so change that green. Same on the other side. Do what I might do. Put the uh, let's put this muddy path in. So I'm just going to go burnt umber, ultramarine. in the brush. Let's go back to our grassy colour. So I'm going to go back to a bit of lemon yellow. Put your rust here now. I'm just going to fill in these little white gaps there. They do look like snow. It was a snow scene. I've just leave it. And pretend it's snow. That's the beauty of the white paper. You don't even have to paint the snow in. It's there already. A bit more lemon yellow. A few of these gaps. A bit of grass there. Right. I might just put a little figure just walking off into the distance. So, Let's just pull this tight, just to make sure it's flat. I might need to just give it a quick dry. the rigger brush. Um, any colour you like really doesn't really make any difference. I'm just going to go light red, light red, you know, light bit of blue. gives the impression of someone just walking off into the distance. We've got a couple of birds as well. A couple of birds just flying around. Finish off with your, with your signature. Put me name down in this corner and call that one done. So, let's, have a, let's have a closer look at it. This is our finished painting. So, if we just look at the photograph again, so I haven't changed too much around really. I've kept the composition pretty much the same really. I put in very simply using raw sienna and ultramarine. 
use the same two colours for the most distant trees and then they've got stronger and stronger tones as they've come closer to us. These trees, we've got a combination of just using fingernails for the twigs and also a bit of rigor work. Put a few more in with the brush. Same on the other side, just scrape these in with the fingernail and use the rigor just to do a few more here and there, just give the impression of these twigs all around. See the fence post put in there, just using the card. The paint will have to be at least half dry. If you do it while it's still wet, it'll just fill back in. Obviously, if you leave it too late and it's dry, it won't scrape off at all. Which gives a nice impression of the fence. Put in a very, very simple way of doing it. Then we've got our muddy path that just sort of winds its way around up to a little figure who's walking off into the distance, into the trees. Could have done differently. See where it's really muddy. Here in the photograph, board filling in the white gaps with the green. If I'd have put some blue in, it might have looked like uh, like water reflecting the colour of the sky. Just put in little puddles. I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing. Any questions, please ask, and I'll see you again soon.